Hi everyone, so on today's video we'll talk about one of the suggestions one of you has left me on Instagram account. So on today's video, guess what we are talking about? Anticoagulants versus antiplatelets. So stay tuned, let's dive into it. Okay, so first of all, let's distinguish between antiplatelets and anticoagulants. Their physiological effect is quite different in terms of physiological response. So let's get this clear. Antiplatelets, they will inactivate the aggregation of platelets, which is normally the first step in the process of clothing. Whilst the anticoagulants, they will block the formation of fibrin. And this formation of fibrin is normally one of the last steps in the cloth formation process, where the fibrin complex just gets around the platelets and other cells such as red cells and make the cloth really firm and makes it more solid. So if you are enjoying this video, subscribe to the channel, give it a big thumbs up and leave me some suggestion of other videos you want me to cover. So let's continue. Okay, so since we have distinguished between both of them, let's go a bit deeper. We'll take things really simply in this video. That's why we are Easy Peasy Pharmacology. So we make it simple for you to understand better because anticoagulants and antiplatelets can be quite confusing. So let's start with it. The antiplatelets, they will, as we've seen, be like a first responder. So they will prevent aggregation of platelets. And basically they will act more in the arterial system. Why? So the arteries, they tend to be more of a faster flowing vessel. So in there, our thrombus are normally main formed of platelets and not as much of fibrin. So even if we have anticoagulant preventing the formation of fibrin, they will not have much formation in the arteries, whilst the platelets, they will be the main component in there. So the platelets, they act mainly on the arterial system. Whilst the anticoagulants, they will be the other way around. The anticoagulants, they will act more in the venous system. So they are most, more like slower moving vessels. So their thrombus there, they are composed of platelets, but also loads of fibrin. So they will prevent this fibrin formation. So that's another point to take in mind. Antiplatelets, mainly in the arteries. Anticoagulants act mainly in the venous system. Okay, so on this, uh, first part to understand clearly the difference between both kind of drugs, antiplatelets and anticoagulants, let's just explore a little bit more. First of all, the antiplatelets, which we said that they are kind of a first responder, they will block the aggregation of antiplatelets, but how this aggregation of platelets works? So basically there are several elements that help with it. The first one is ADP, so ADP is an element that helps the platelets to aggregate to get them really sticky and basically some drugs will act here. So for example the colpidogrel, they will block this process in the ADP, so there is no aggregation of platelets as easily. Then we've got another substance or element which is the thromboxane A2. So, this thromboxane A2 is normally synthesized by the platelets and basically thromboxane A2 is another element really important for the aggregation or the stickiness of the platelets and basically the aspirin, which is a drug that everyone knows, especially at lower dosage, it will block the enzyme that produces this thromboxane A2 and so the platelets cannot get as sticky, they cannot aggregate as easily. And lastly, there is also a complex GB2B and 2A, which helps with this aggregation as well alongside, and there are other antiplatelet drugs that work here. So antiplatelets, in general, they will be not as aggressive. Then we'll have the anticoagulants. So the anticoagulants are more of a second responder. So basically, after platelet aggregation issue, we need to look into the fibrin formation because 
thrombos are formed normally with platelets and fibrin, so basically the anticoagulants, they will ultimately not allow the fibrinogen to convert into fibrin. The anticoagulants, we will further see clotting cascade, but very generally they will block this cascade in different parts and so the last step of fibrinogen to lead to fibrin will not happen at all. And I guess that's pretty much it for today's video. So I hope that made sense. I know I've done it a little bit in a simplistic way, but I just want you to like get some message really clear. And now on the next videos and the next parts, we'll get more specific and we'll go into detail. So you get all the specifics as well in an easy way. So stay tuned and as I said, comment down below and let me know what you want me to cover next or if you have any questions, anything, just pop me a message, I love to hear from you. See you later!